The anterior drawer test is one very common special test used by physical therapists and other health professionals to assess the integrity of the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL for short. The ACL is one of four ligaments of the knee and provides anterior stability of the tibia on the femur. The other three ligaments include lateral collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament, and the posterior cruciate ligament. This stability is important for dynamic lower extremity activities like cutting in sports. A very common injury in athletes is an ACL tear. The most common method of tearing an ACL is through a non-contact injury in which a person plants one foot and twists their leg. This type of motion is common in sports like basketball, soccer, and tennis. It can also be torn while skiing or through a high impact contact injury such as being tackled in football. If an ACL tear is suspected, the anterior drawer test is one of the special tests that may be used to determine whether the ACL is intact. Typically, it is used in conjunction with other special tests, such as the pivot shift test and Lachman's test. These special tests are done after an initial screen of the systems and initial examination of the joints is done. The screen and exam may include components such as blood pressure, skin integrity check, dermatome testing, pain assessment, passive range of motion, overpressures, active range of motion, and strength testing. Now let's break down the anterior drawer test. The four steps include patient position, PT position, action, and assessment. First, the patient should be positioned in supine with the knee that you are testing in 80 to 90 degrees of flexion and 45 degrees of hip flexion. The PT's position can be done in three steps. First, stabilize the leg by sitting on the patient's foot. Next, place the thumbs in the joint space. Last, use the remaining fingers to palpate the musculature, especially the hamstrings, to ensure that they are relaxed. Next, the PT will perform the action of the anterior jaw test by applying a quick anterior force on the tibia. Last, assess the motion. Feel for displacement and end feel. A normal end feel would be considered firm. Other end feels include soggy, hard, and empty. The anterior drawer test is determined positive if there is an increased anterior displacement compared to the opposite knee or greater than 5 millimeters of movement. Now let's put this all together. What does it look like in real life? Okay, great Chelsea. So now that I've checked your range of motion and done some initial screens, gotten your history, um, I have a suspicion that you might have a torn anterior cruciate ligament, which is a ligament in your knee. You might know it as the ACL. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, so based on uh, your injury, uh, could you describe it one more time? Yeah, of course. Um, I was playing soccer, it was about five days ago, and I just planted, I was going for a ball, and I, I kind of landed on my foot, and then I twisted, and I heard a pop, and I hurt my knee. So that's a very typical presentation for an ACL tear. So what I'm going to be doing next is a couple of special tests. The first one I'm going to start with is called the anterior drawer test. It's a very quick test just to check to see if the integrity of your ACL is, is good. So if you go ahead and lay down on your back. <coughs> good. So I'm going to check your good side first just to have something to compare it to. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend your knee up to about 90 degrees. And then I'm going to check to see if there's any type of sag. So what a sag is is when your tibia, which is this bone here, is a little bit lower than your femur, which is your big bone here. So you don't have any type of sag, and that could give me a false positive, so that's good. So I'm just going to sit on your foot for stability. I'm just putting my fingers here on your hamstring tendons, okay. and my fingers here on your joint space. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a very quick pull forward. Okay. This shouldn't cause you any pain, but I'll ask anyway after the test. Okay, ready? Anything? No? Great. That's good. 
Okay, and you didn't have any displacement of your tibia, which is great. Okay, now let's go for this side. We're going to do the same exact thing. Let me know if you have anything with this. 90 degrees. <clears throat> I don't see any type of sag close to your side, which is good. Just going to sit on your foot. Same thing, just going to feel for your hamstrings. They're nice and relaxed. My fingers are in your joint space again. I'm just going to pull, okay? This could cause a little bit of pain. Did that hurt? Um, a little bit. A little bit? Okay. You did have displacement forward more so on this side than on that side. Okay. So that would be a positive test. Um, I'm going to do a couple more tests just to make sure that this definitely is a positive ACL. Okay. We're going to do one called the Lachman's and one called the Pivot Shift Test. Okay. Next. Okay. Great. So now that you have some background on the anterior drawer test and know how the special test is performed, let's discuss the test from a more scientific perspective. We have discussed that this test assesses the integrity of the ACL. But what does that mean exactly? As explained earlier, due to its location, the ACL ensures that the tibia does not translate anteriorly on the femur excessively. During this test, by fixing the patient's leg on the table and pulling anteriorly on the tibia, the test determines whether the ACL is still intact by assessing whether the tibia can move forward more than the ACL should allow for. This test should be used in patients who you suspect may have an ACL deficiency. It should not be used in circumstances in which there is a new fracture near the region since pulling on the fractured bone can cause further damage. Fracture may be obvious if any bony deformity is seen. Meticulousness is extremely important in the case of the anterior drawer test because of the low sensitivity associated with this test. The sensitivity of this test has been found to be in a range of 22.2 to 95.2%. However, there is a large difference between acute and chronic cases. In the acute cases, the range of sensitivity found in studies is from 22.2 to 41%, with an average of 34.05%. Chronic cases, on the other hand, have a range of 53.8 to 95.24%, with an average sensitivity of 83.3%. This means that when the test is performed acutely, an ACL tear might not be correctly identified due to discomfort of the test position, swelling, and muscle guarding associated with an acute injury. However, it should be noted that the specificity of this test has been found to be 95% and higher, which means that if a positive finding is made, it is likely that the patient does have a deficient ACL. When doing this test, there are a few things you should be aware of. Before performing the anterior drawer test, be sure to check for a positive posterior sag to rule out the possibility of a false positive. Upon inspection, the tibia should be slightly anterior to the femoral condyles. If the tibia appears to be posteriorly displaced or there is a sag in the tibia, it is a positive test. If the anterior drawer test was to be performed on a patient with posterior sag, the amount of perceived anterior displacement of the tibia could be misinterpreted as ACL deficiency rather than realignment from the sag position. Due to the flexed 90 degree position of the knee during this test, the hamstrings are at a strong biomechanical advantage and may act to stabilize the tibia during the anterior drawer test. This means the test may have a negative result even when there is a deficiency in the ACL or a false negative. 